Okay, so just listen to my voice. Okay, yes. stay on the line I with am, me. I am complimenting. Okay, are you with the patient now? Well, I'm in the lounge and the kitchen blending to death with any luck. All right, so just stay on the line with me. Look, this is not, you're not paid enough to do with this. It's not fair. Okay, well, ultimately, madam, I'm listening to your voice and you're the help I have available, so we need to help him, okay? No, I'm not. All right, madam, I don't how many times have you stabbed him? Um, I did the once. You did the once? And then he said I wouldn't do it again, so I did it first more. So, okay. So, in total, how many times? Uh, three times. Three times, okay. Uh, once I thought I'd get his heart, well, he hasn't got one, and then twice in the abdomen, so... Hello, madam. Do you need to step outside for me a minute? Can you, can you come outside? Yes. Thank no, you. He's on the kitchen floor. Okay, at this oh. moment in time, okay, if you just listen to my colleague, um, under arrest suspicion of attempt murder, mate. Under arrest yeah, suspicion of attempt murder. And you do not have to say anything. Not really it may harm your defence. You do not mention when questioned anything you're later relying on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Um, I'll go in and see what they do. Yeah. Could I get my coat? Just bear with me two seconds. In there. I admit it all. All right. Just get them. All right. I want to go in. All right. No, so, he's on the kitchen yeah. floor. Can someone just stay with Devon while I go in? There's nothing nasty, and I'm certainly not. Not. <laughs> my coat's in the. Yeah, just Ow, wait two seconds. Hot. All right. You okay? You all right? If there's any luck, right. you'll be too all right. late. All right. Uh, well, I'm called Penny, but Penelope Jackson. Where do you live here? Uh, so you do live here? Yes. Can I get my coat? Get, right, coat get the ambulance in, pronto. We need oh, CPR. Oh, no, 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 no. Please don't. Yeah, we need oh, the ambulance in. have stabbed him a bit more. We've got CPR being done at the moment. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Come with me, mate. Yeah, sure. I found a key. Yes. I stabbed him. Once. I've only just because he's a. You're going to send them on. He's an aggressive bully and nasty, and I've had enough. And when he said, you won't do it, I did it twice more. Coats in, what colour is your coat? In the, front, in the front, Yeah. grey, grey wardrobe. Okay, it might be a while, all right, but I'll try and get, there's obviously a lot going on, okay. Oh, with any luck, it'll be too late. My, Penelope, my advice is don't, don't talk about it now, okay. No, no, I have no, no intention of not agreeing to what I've done. Okay. I know what I've done. All right. And I know why I've done it. And if I haven't done it properly, I'm really annoyed. All right, Penny. Um, I'm arresting, further arresting you for murder. Oh, um, good. I've already cautioned you, yes. so your necessities for your arrest is for a prompt and effective investigation. Yeah. And to stop further harm. Sorry, that one's a bit tight. So anyway, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna move them to the room in a minute. The side, the um, DO's just come out to um, check your temperature, and then we'll we'll move you in. And then we'll go right. Just stay there for the time being. All right. I've got my slippers. Penelope and David Jackson has been married 24 years. To their friends and relatives, they were a happy married couple, a sociable and gregarious wife, and a quiet, unassuming husband. But all that changed on the evening of February 13th when police were called to David and Penelope Jackson's house in the small coastal village of Barrow in Somerset. Jackson had stabbed her husband of 24 years three times with a kitchen knife, twice as he was on the phone to police calling for help, after a row over serving bubble and squeak with her birthday meal. Claiming her husband, a retired lieutenant colonel, was coercive, controlling and physically violent, she said she lost control when he called her pathetic. 
She first slashed him across the chest in a bedroom of their home and was heard during the 999 call inflicting the subsequent wounds. He died from his injuries as she refused to help him, instead telling paramedics with any luck you'll be too late as they entered their home. Jackson denied murder but was convicted by jurors at Bristol Crown Court who returned a majority verdict of 10 to 2. She seemed quite happy that she had killed her husband, a senior police officer said. The 66-year-old penned a note titled Confession after the attack at their Parsonage Road bungalow in the quiet village located between Bernamonsi and Weston Supermare. In it, she wrote how she had taken so much over the years and described her husband as a good daddy, but said of him the mask slipped and she accepted her punishment. Police went on to describe the events that night as a premeditated, calculated murder. Dead sea agents Roger Doxey, from Avon, and Somerset Police, said Jackson was very open about what she did and in her own words was compass mentis at the time of the killing. She was quite clear and composed in her mind about what she had done and she was very open that she had stabbed her husband three times and she seemed quite happy about it, he said. Body cam footage from the time of her arrest would go on to lay this bare. A frank admission of the attack on her 78-year-old husband followed, and she was heard to say, I should have stabbed him a bit more and if I haven't done it properly, I'll be really annoyed. When she was informed she was being arrested on suspicion of murder, she replied, oh good and went on to say I've no intention of not agreeing to what I've done. I tell you what, you don't get many murders in Burrell. David Jackson was her fourth husband and she was his third wife. Her allegations of domestic abuse only came out during the trial, but others painted a different picture of Penelope Jackson. Mr. Jackson's second wife, Sheila Taylor, said it was David who was frightened of his wife, who had once threatened to cut his penis off if he ever left her. He honestly believed she was capable of carrying out that threat, Ms. Taylor said. Poke sore spots. His daughter from his first marriage, Jane Calverly, said the defendant liked making people feel uncomfortable. When he was with the defendant he always seemed like he was on edge. I always felt everything had to revolve around Jackson. She enjoyed finding people's sore spots and poking them, Ms. Calverly told the trial. She also recalled staying with Jackson and her father when she was having trouble in her own marriage. Ms. Calverly said Jackson had advised her, it's much easier if your husband kills himself. Describing the allegations of domestic abuse as wicked and distressing for the family, Dead Sea agents Doxy said the jury's task was made more difficult because they had not heard the victim's side of the story. David Jackson hasn't been able to respond to allegations of domestic abuse, Dead Sea agents Doxy said. The key issues for the jury were, would they accept there was a long history of domestic abuse, and secondly did that domestic abuse justify her loss of control on that evening? The evidence presented was that she was really, really calm and to hear some of the allegations she's made during the trial, it must have been awful for the family to hear that. She stabbed him not just once, she went back and stabbed him twice more and she wanted him to die, it's really clear from the evidence. The incident took place at the couple's home in Barrow. Image caption. The couple lived together in the coastal village of Barrow in Somerset. In public, the couple gave the impression of enjoying married life, with a number of friends and relatives providing testimony to the effect they never saw any signs the couple was unhappy. Daughter Isabel Potterton, 31, said her parents seemed to be enjoying a happy retirement but often bickered over small things, with her mother's temper flaring and quickly passing while her father had a tendency to sulk. Son-in-law Tom Potterton told the jury he had seen the couple arguing but it was relatively short-lived and forgotten about and nothing he was concerned about. It was following the row on Jackson's birthday about serving bubble and squeak with a steak dinner that sparked the events of that night. Angry at the choice of side dish, he got nasty, ruining her birthday, Jackson told jurors. Soon after, she lunged at him with a kitchen knife. Julie Smith, an old friend of Jackson's whom she met when they both worked at the Ministry of Defense, said she was sociable and gregarious, and described Mr. Jackson as quiet, unassuming, sociable, and a good man. They both had quite strong views so they were similar in that respect. They seemed to rub along quite well, just little disagreements like any married couple, she added. She said she had never seen any aggression between the pair and they seemed comfortable in each other's company. 
Jackson told her trial David Jackson was often violent towards her. A neighbor in Burroughs said he often spoke with Mr. Jackson, whom he described as being a good friend. We got on very well. He'd do anything for me. Most mornings I go out and we'd have a chat for a few minutes and to be honest I couldn't ask for a better friend, he said. Det C.H. and Spdoxy said the families of the Jacksons were being supported as the case had been horrendous for them, and nothing could take away the pain they had endured. 